I'm ready to lay out for the legs. Um, so I'm going to lay out one leg and then use that again for a pattern to transfer all my lines to. So I'm measuring up from the bottom, nine and a half inches, and I have my rails exactly on the six inch mark, so I can use my uh, exact sizing to get that distance. So I'm going to go from there exactly six inches, make my second line, and down from the top it will be six inches, and then one inch from the very top there because this one will be enclosed on four sides too and you'll see all that unfold as we go so I'm squaring the line around onto the two opposite faces because the, ten, the tenon is or the mortise and the tenon is going to go through the narrow section to my square at the right edge here. And that's the position of the mortise hole. I've used a pencil to start with. I'm going to transfer to a knife line in a minute. I've set my two pins just on the wide side of the chisel. So the chisel goes just in between the two points. That means the lines for the mortise hole are going to be slightly bigger, but I'm going to use the same setting of the twin pins when I move this stock to set out my tenon. So don't worry about that just now, but that's my chisel just fits just in between the two points. Registration of this goes against the face edge here. So I run my two lines in here like this. Same onto this one here. I flip over end for end, so I'm registering against this same edge here. Like that. And like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take my square, because I want these dead square onto the opposite side. I'm going to go in between my two gauge lines with a knife wall. I'm going to make a mark here on the corner. Go up to the next one. I'm going to check myself. Go back into here just to make sure I'm dead on that six inches. Uh, I'm going to make a knife point here. Just to make sure I'm exact. So in between and a small nick on the corner. Go on to, yep. Yeah, this face here, knife into the neck here, knife into the neck here, and onto this face here. So in between the two gauge lines, and this one also. I'm less concerned on this top one. I am going to make sure that I'm the right distance down. And I'm just going to go here. The blade of my square is one inch, so I'm coming down from the top on there. Transfer this line to the opposite side, and I'm then ready to start chopping my mortises. None of this is going to be seen on this top side. I'm just using the top edge to guide my knife. And I'm ready to start chopping. This is still a temporary bench and things tend to bounce around a little bit. Whatever you do, work safely. Make sure your tools are safe. I'm going to shift this a little bit so I'm more square, more solid on this way. Make sure you're safe, that's all I want. You can clamp this on here or you can do as I'm going to do. I'm just going to work free like this. I start away from my knife wall 
right shot. Start levering, work away from it. Check yourself for perpendicular by just sighting your chisel. I'm gonna come closer into the knife wall now, but I'm not going into the knife wall yet. And I just start levering. This has got me down, I'm about half an inch down now. So keep working in between those gauge lines and now it'll go quite quickly. So there we go. So I'm three quarters of an inch down now. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn around, the bevel is now going this way, so the bevel is on this side of my chisel. So I'm gonna lever. So I'm taking this down a little bit deeper. This will speed up the process. Now I don't lever against this end ever, so I can go in right now into my knife wall, check myself for perpendicular this way, according to this. And let's see, that's me. So when I go in now, I can lift out a lot of that waste wood and I'm down a good inch already. So now I just go deeper and deeper as I work across. Here's my first bench cut on this bench top. So try and be sensitive to the chisel, to the wood, make sure you're not stressing it too much. And you may want to move even to the end here. I don't know if it'll feel more solid or not. I don't know. I think I'm going to go back, feel safer here. Just clean out the waste as you go by flicking your wrist. Sometimes that sounds like a lot. I'm going to take a little bit less, move your chisel over, lift that wood. So it's going deeper and deeper. So I think we're down about an inch and a half now. Keep within your gauge line. I just saw myself drifting off a little bit. Because these will be shown after. And you can clamp this to your bench top. If you've got clamps, just do that. We only have eight of these to do. Half an hour a piece, maybe. I don't know. Harder. I wonder if this knot here is emanating into the wood. But I'm glad I picked this wood, it's very stout. Even though it's a soft wood, it's very stout.
chisel wants to twist on me, I'm correcting it there. gauge lines in sight on each side because you can pare down the walls after to that. <laughs> Too big a bite there so I back off, go half the bite there and I can hear and feel the difference. Just see how far we've gone. See there, we're over halfway at that point. Keep your bench top clean. Turning my chisel around there, probably noticed. Oh, my ferrules come loose. That happens sometimes. It's quite hard here, it's the knot. Can you see this knot here? That's causing me a little bit of jip. I think I'm right in the middle of the knot down at the bottom there. But we keep going. Yeah, that, that's definitely a knot there. And when there is a knot there, that's probably the only time I might suggest reaching for a brace and bit going down into the bottom of the hole. This is working fine apart from... <laughs> happens to the best of us. I'm right in my knife wall here now. Flip over, get rid of the debris. And inside here, this is deeper than here. Usually I'll go back the other way now, start chopping about a third of the way along. Now the wood has somewhere to go. I just leave her and move along. One blow usually will take me down to the same level. So I keep the bevel of my chisel perpendicular to the long axis. Oops, another one gone. And this will make me halfway through, just over. I'm using the very heel of the, the bevel as the fulcrum point now. Pretty tough stuff, this. Great for legs, fabulous. 
So there's my last, this is my last cut now. Following the wall down, don't leave her on this end, don't leave her on the other end. Go with a narrower chisel if you've got one, which I'm sure you do, just a half inch, just to tease out those fibers from this side. And I'll show you what's inside. There it is, I'm just a little over halfway. Flip over, we go down from the other side now. All right, one more go. Starting from away from that line. I start quite away from the line to start with. Up, turn the chisel around, lever, like this. Lever at that waist. And then move up to your knife wall. Another one bites the dust. Huh? It's not really moving the bench top, staying nice and solid. I won't move that chisel though. We should have done that before. Soon we'll be having a bench, and that's the neat thing about this. Take your time, enjoy the process. starting to listen because I want to listen for that point where I'm starting to break through to the other side. Give up. Ah, there it is, I'm through. So now every one of these are going to go through. I can feel it, I can hear it, and it feels good. Still. Keep my wood on the bench top. I don't want the little nuggets going underneath. There they are. Back to my bevel. The bevel's been traveling in the direction I've been traveling in every time. Like this. this is going easier now. Don't take too big a bite off, just be patient. So hard 
odd stuff here. Nearly there. So I'm three quarters of the way, or less actually. I love the smell, I love the vibration, I love the idea that I'm making my workbench. You're going to feel it too when you start yours. It doesn't matter if it takes you three days or three weeks or three months. You're going to love this whole process, I believe. Another one bites the dust. Am I biting the dust? No, no. I'm right in the side of a knot here. But it's doing fine. It's hard, hard. Have I said that already? So here, I'm right on the very centre of that knot, turning the chisel round. Follow the rake at first, just to remove that heavy top wood. Now I'm right on that knife wall. I'm right in it there. Chop, eyeball. There it is, and there I am content with that. For now, I'll come back in and fettle it in a little bit. But there's my mortise. So the ferrule coming loose was pretty annoying, but I just persevered. I needed to get going and keep on. To fix it, I slid the ferrule off and dabbed some super glue around the section underneath. Then I wiggled the ferrule back into place, wiped it clean with some shaving, and used a center punch to indent the brass of the ferrule into the wood of the handle. I gave it another wipe clean and got back to work. I picked the configuration I wanted for my legs and drew a triangle to help me keep track of the orientation. Then I transferred the layout markings onto the other legs and continued to lay them out. Then I chopped the rest of the mortises. But I want you to look out for how I dealt with the knot in this next section because remember wood is like life, it comes with knots in it. It's pretty unusual to do it this way. Chopping all these mortises is a lot of work, but I know you can do it. 